Continuing with the David Williams World Wars Children's Stories, Nigel Nitboy. Nigel Nitboy. Nits are itchy. Nits are scratchy. Nits are scritchy. Nits are a nuisance. Not for Nigel. Nigel was a boy who could never have enough nits. He wanted his hair crawling with them. Our, table, our tale begins on the morning that Nigel woke up to discover he had a nit living in his hair. Most of us would be appalled and immediately try to evict the nit. Not Nigel. He was delighted. The boy called his nit Mr. Henderson. Nigel didn't have a dog or a cat or a hamster, so he treated his nit like a pet. He made sure he never combed his hair. Nits hate combs. Soon Nigel's hair was wild and frizzy like a great big bush. A jungle paradise for nits. Nigel fed Mr. Henderson tibbets of dandruff. Nits loved dandruff in the hope of training him to do tricks, like leaping from one side of Nigel's head to the other. <coughs> Soon afterwards, Nigel heard of another child at school who had nits. Her name was Tina Ting. Nigel wanted Tina's nits more than anything in the world. He wanted nits, nits and more nits. At break time, Nigel chased the poor girl around the, around the playground. What do you want? cried Tina tearfully. I am not, pl- I am not playing it. I want your nits, replied the boy. My nits, you are nuts, she had the girl. Yes, I am nuts for nits, said Nigel. The boy tripped over a skateboard and flew through the air towards her. Clonk, their heads bashed, and in an instant, Tina's nits crawled over to Nigel's head. A little dazed, the boy was nonetheless happy. Now Mr. Henderson had some company. The next day, Nigel heard of a boy in school who had nits, Colin Clunt. Nigel wanted those nits so badly, so he chased Colin down the corridor and cornered him in the toilets. Then, the trembling boy locked himself in a cubicle, but Nigel would not give up. He climbed over the top of the next cubicle and dangled upside down from the ceiling. Nigel's and Colin's heads knocked together. Once again, nits sprang across to Nigel's head. Bonk! Even the school cap was not safe from Nigel's advances. When Nigel was told that... That Minky the cat also had nits. He pursued the poor creature across the football field. Once he had got the cat, he sellotaped it to his head. It looked like a very unconvincing wig. Still, one by one, the cat's nits bounded onto Nigel's head. Soon, Nigel had so many nits that even his nits had nits. He stopped count- counting them at a million and three. Now you may be wondering why Nigel wanted a head full of nits. Please let me explain. Ever since he was a toddler, Nigel had spent his days reading comics. The boy was short for his age, if you don't count the wide brush of hair on top of his head, and he wanted to be strong and powerful like the characters in his comics. However, Nigel had a very normal upbringing. He'd not been lucky enough to have been bitten by a radioactive spider, or come from a viking planet, or fallen down a well of bats. Besides, he found superheroes a bit boring, they were always doing good. The supervillains were so much more thrilling. Before long, Naughty Nigel had a plan. One morning, as the boy was standing in the bathroom cleaning his teeth, he looked at himself in the mirror. His hair was now so much of bush, more of hedge grow. Nigel could not remember the last time he had either cut or combed it. Buzzing in and out of his he- hedgerow of hair were billions of nits forming dark clouds around him. The day has finally come. My knit-based superpower is ready. From the day on, the world will know me only as Knit Boy. Best of all, the name hadn't already been taken. So now that Nigel had all his knits, he went about getting a costume made. Fortunately, the boy's auntie Pat was quite good at sewing and put together a supervillain costume for her nephew in no time. Nigel wore a cape fashioned from one of his mum's skirts, his dad's old wife once, Wellington boots, the NB logo for Nip Boys sewn by Auntie Pat, his nana's tights. Nigel had a superpower. He had his name. His costume was on. He was Nip Boy. And once he begun his super villainry, the next morning he strode into school, his cape flapping in the wind. First, Nigel vowed to get revenge on his geography teacher, Mr. Drummum. Nigel found geography boring and spent most of his lessons reading comic books. Mr. Drumhum had given the boy detention after detention. Now Nip Boy stood at the door to the classroom. Initially, there were hoots of laughter from the other children, what with his costume and and shrubland of hair. There would be the supervillain. Did look quite a sight. Ha, ha, ha. However, the laughter turned to silent awe as Nip Boy called out his first command. Nit swarm. 
The billions of nits were whirling around his head from the black mass next to him. Nigel, what on earth do you think you are doing? demanded Mr. Drumham. Nits, attack! shouted the boy. They swarmed the geography teacher, nipping him all over with their tiny knit claws. Ah! screamed Mr. Drumham as he raced out of the classroom. All his pupils pressed their faces up against the windows to watch their teacher. The man was trying desperately to fend off the nits. He was hopping and spinning and slapping himself as he sped across the playground field towards the school pond. Mr. Drumham then leaped in with a giant splosh. <coughs> he finally had some relief from the nit nips, though now he was submerged in green water with a fat frog sitting on his head. Nit boy smiled to himself. This was going to be fun. Next, he marched across the playground to the dining hall. The d dinner lady, Mrs. Droop, was something of a dragon. Boiled broccoli was her signature dish. Whatever you chose, even jam, roly poly and custard, Mrs. Droop would spoon heaps of her green watery mush on top. Then she would stalk up and down the dining tables, twirling her ladle like a ba baton, threatening to wrap the knuckles of anyone who didn't eat up every last mouthful. Nigel hated broccoli. If Superman feared kryptonite, Nip Boy was terrified of broccoli. Now he was to have his revenge on the woman who had made him eat mountains of it. Nigel, he purred as he strode in. Why have you got your pants on your trousers? Ha ha ha, Mrs. Duke's smile was wiped off his face soon as Nip Boy shouted his next command. Nits, to the broccoli! I'm not having your blasted headlights messing with my delicious broccoli, protested the dinner lady. Too late, the nits had swarmed into a whirling tornado. Mrs. Droop stood open-mouthed in shock as this twisting vortex spun over to her. Precious trays of broccoli. Then the tornado started firing the damp, limp vegetables straight at Mrs. Droop. Soggy florette after soggy florette splattered across the woman's face until Mrs. Droop was a damp, green, vegetable mess. Now, Nip Boy was ready to have his revenge on his headmaster. The elderly Mrs. Shaw... Sourchops had suspended Nigel from school after his tenth detention for reading comic books in class. The headmaster ha was a small and timid man, so Nip Boy thought he would, he would frighten him. Nigel stood in the playground just below the window of the headmaster's office. He closed his eyes. Nips, nits, shape shift, he ordered. Slowly, the tiny insects swarmed together into a shape of giant super nit. They were able to read the a master's mind. As the boy kept his eyes tightly shut, a lot, a lot, a look of intense concentration on his face, the giant net shape surged up towards the headmaster's window. It banged on the glass with its huge claw. Clunk. Mr. Sourchops swiveled round in his chair and shrieked, No! The giant nip bashed its great head against the window, breaking the glass. Crack! Help! screamed the headmaster as he dashed out of his office, running into the playground. Mr. Sourchops spotted a wheelie bin, checking behind himself all the time for the giant's soup in it. The little old man pushed the bin as hard as he could before leaping into it as it was speeding away. Finally, Nip Boy opened his eyes and watched in glee as his headmaster trundled across the playground to the bin. It bashed into a low wall, sending the little old man flying through the air straight into a tree trunk. Clunk! Clang! The nits swarmed back to their master's head as Nigel strode out the school gates. There's plenty more super villainry to be, to be done. Not long after, Nip Boy arrived in the market square, which was teeming with bargain hunters. Using his nits, Nigel spelled out the letters of a very rude word in the sky. Bottoms! One old lady was so shocked she fainted at the sight. Next, Nip Boy turned his attention to the local toy shop. The supervillain ordered his nits to steal every single item in the store, including the till. The shop owner chased the boy down the street, but he was whacked over the head by the nits with one of his own giant teddy bears. Yet, there was still more chaos and destruction to come. Suddenly, lights flashed and the sirens whirled. The police had been sent to stop Nigel from creating further mayhem. But Nip Boy ordered his nits to attack the police car and they swarmed to its windscreen. The glass became so thick with nits that the policeman crashed straight into the window of an optician's. Smash! Nothing could stop Nip Boy now. He felt invincible. Soon the whole world would kneel before him. All oh, hail Nip Boy! Later that night, Nigel had put on his pyjamas and was lying in bed. Even supervillains need their sleep. The boy was dreaming up the next day's evil schemes. However, outside in the street stood a throng of townsfolk, armed, 
was not with flaming torches and pitchforks as in the tradition with angry mobs, but with an array of combs. Nitboy had had to be robbed of his powers, and there was only one way to do that. They began to comb his hair, comb his hair. The chant became louder and louder as the mob grew angrier and angrier. Nigel leaped from his bed and peeked out of the window. Looking down, he saw more and more people rushing out of their houses to join the horde. In a swirling whirl of nips, Nigel changed out of his pyjamas to become Nip Boy. He marched outside and approached the mob with his Wellington boots on and his cape, which was really one of his mum's old skirts flapping in the wind. Nip Boy felt ready to take on the world. His millions of nits had now multiplied into billions or maybe trillions. They buzzed round the boy's head, blacking out the scattering stars in the night sky. It would be hard to give you an exact number because Nitz won't stay still making counting them impossible. There he is, shouted someone. It's Nit Boy, get him! The mob surged forward, brandishing their combs. The old lady, who had fainted in the market square, was holding a large bottle of anti nit shampoo called N- Nit Blitz. On the label it said, The sworn energy of Nit. This is highly toxic and foul smelling shampoo. It is poisonous to all known Nits. It is guaranteed to kill Nits until they are totally and utterly completely dead. Unable to contain her anger a moment longer, the old lady hurled the bottle at Nigel. It bounced off his hair and hit on hit on his head, knocking her out cold. The boy still stood his ground. Once again he commanded his nits, nits lift. The nits swooped downwards to create a hoverboard under the master's feet. Then he lifted him off the ground with laughable ease. The, gr- the crowd gasped in shock. The supervillain could actually fly. The boy zoomed through the night sky performing an impressive loop-de-loop before hovering over the mob. Now go back to your homes or you will feel the full force of Nip Boy. The townsfolk began muttering to each other dejectedly. They knew they were beaten, yet still no one moved. Disperse, Nip Boy ordered the crowd, but his nits must have thought he was talking to them. Nits are known for their, not known for their intelligence. As far as I know, no nit has performed brain surgery or been involved in rocket science. So... The nits dispersed, led by Mr. Henderson. They all buzzed off in different directions, disappearing into the sky. Nip Boy looked down at the people below. He gulped as he began to plummet downwards. He tumbled through the air, desperately flapping his arms. Help! The crowd surged out of the way, and Nigel landed head first on the pavement. Fortunately, such was the volume of hair on his head that he survived the fall without injury. Grab him! shouted someone. Nigel was carted off to the local hairdressers where his head was washed with nip blitz shampoo and he was given very sensible short back and sides. All remaining nits or nit eggs were combed out of his Nigel's hair and he had to make a promise in front of the whole town. I solemnly, solemnly swear never ever to become nit boy again. He might be surprised to learn, even though he was one of the world's worst children. Nigel kept his promise. Nit boy was never seen again. However, some time later, Nigel came up with another supervillain to be. From now on, he would be known as Veruca Boy, a supervillain who refused to wear plastic socks at the swimming pool, thereby unleashing a plague of Verucas on the world. And the best part was that Nigel could reuse the cape that was really his mum's old skirt. Oh, well,